What's up guys? In this example, what I want to do is kind of cover a main question you need to ask yourself when you're trying to solve any trigonometric equation. But now I'm going to focus on an easy equation here because it's really important to understand what we're trying to solve here and exactly how we're trying to solve. When we're solving trigonometric equations, a lot of times we're going to be doing a lot of different operations until we get to a final point here. But this is the point where a lot of students kind of forget what they previously learned about trigonometric functions and they can't actually solve the equation. So the main question you want to be asking yourself is the sign of what angle? which in this case is theta, is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. That is what we're trying to solve for. We're trying to solve for the angle. So the sine of what angle is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. Now, in our study of trigonometric functions in the unit circle, hopefully you remember that the sine of an angle is equal to the y-coordinate on the unit circle. So if we have to solve this equation on a restriction of, let's say, 0 to 2 pi, that's going to be rather simple because that's really just going to be the unit circle. We can see that the first angle here, right, is going to be 0, and then halfway around a circle is going to be pi, and then all all the way around the circle is going to be 2 pi. So effectively, the unit circle contains our interval of 0 to 2 pi. Now, all we simply need to do is say, well, what angles produce a y coordinate of square root of 2 over 2? And hopefully you have the first quadrant memorized. That's like really the main thing I want my students to be able to know is on this first quadrant here, we have this angle and this coordinate point, which is going to be a square root of 2 over 2 comma a square root of 2 over 2. And so we can see here that the y coordinate is square root of 2 over 2. And now what exactly is this angle? So this angle is going to be a pi over 4. Now, what other angle is when the y coordinate is going to equal a positive square root of 2 over 2. Well, if you just take this angle and reflect it over here, then the x coordinate is now going to be negative, right? Because that's in the second quadrant, so the x coordinate would be negative. However, the y coordinate is now going to be positive, so that'd be square root of 2 over 2. So really, we just have this angle now here. I know my unit circle is not perfect, but hopefully you see that I just took from 0 to pi and I broke it down into fourths, right? Pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, and yes, exactly, this angle is going to be a 3 pi over 4. So when I ask the question, this major question I want you to know, the sign of what angle equals a sine of theta is equal to square root of 2 over 2, we can say now those two angles is going to be true when theta equals a 3 pi over 4 and a theta equals a pi over 4. Now again, these are just going to be the solutions on the interval of 0 to 2 pi. We could also include all of the solutions. And to do that, all we'd simply need to do is add 2 pi to both of these solutions n number of times. Because if I take my solution, let's say pi over 4, and I add 2 pi, I can continually do that infinite many times because what that's going to produce is what we call coterminal angles. Angle that have the same initial as well as terminal side. Now again, adding 2 pi would still take you back to this angle as well as subtracting 2 pi would take you back to that angle. So if I want to write my all my solutions, then I can simply say theta. Theta is going to equal a pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, where again, n represents any integer, which can mean a positive or negative number. And then we have theta is equal to a 3 pi over 4 comma a 2 pi n. And again, this first one was 0, 2 pi. The sine of theta is equal to square root of 2 over 2. Now, the reason why this question is so important is because a lot of times when we're doing solving, a lot of students get so used to using their inverse operations that they want to revert to using the sine inverse as an operation, which is not fully incorrect because that is going to give you a complete answer. The problem with using sine inverse is the sine inverse is a function. So it's only going to give you one of the answers. So it's really important when you see this equation to ask yourself the question, the sine of what angle is equal to square root of two over two. You could have two answers. You could have three, you could have four, or you could have infinite many answers. Now, again, another way that we could look at the graphing of the plus two pi is again, if we look at the graphical approach of sine. So if we look at sine here and we could say like this, there's two pi, right? And there's four pi. So again, my graphs are not being very good here, but you hopefully get the idea. Now, again, if we look at my answer here and we're looking for when it's square root of two over two, which I don't know what that value is, but if this is going up to one, it's going to be somewhere down here. So the main thing I want you to understand here is here's my two values. Here is going to be pi over four. And this intersect is going to be a three pi over four, because again, what is over here, that's going to be your pi. So the important thing I want you to understand is when does the next solution happen? Happen, right? There's only these two answers on zero to two pi. However, the distance here between my next solution is guess how far do you think that is? How far does that look like that distance is? And if you guess two pi, you are correct. And guess what? When I want to go ahead and find this next solution, you can see here I'm doing the exact same thing again. So a lot of students get confused when I do the adding two pi or subtracting two pi on the unit circle, but you can also look at the graphical approach from this as well when doing that. Now, the reason why this is so important, because if you don't ask this question, a lot of times students will just go ahead and follow using their inverse operations. So for example, if I had a three X, you know, minus six equals zero. And I said to solve, undo everything that's happening to the variable, right? So I'm going to add a six to the sides. And therefore that's going to give me a three X equals six. And then I'll divide by three on both sides. And I get an X equals two, right? So a lot of students get used to doing that for solving your trigonometric equation. So for instance, if I had like a two, you know, sine of theta minus a square root of two equals zero. Students will follow the same thing and they'll say, all right, you know, add a square root of two over both sides. And then I have a two sine of theta equals a square root of two. And then they divide by two. And they're so used to using your inverse operations. They say, well, if I need to solve for 
theta, then I need to undo sine, right? So how do we undo sine? Well, previously in our study on trigonometric functions, we talked about the inverse sine function. And yes, you can take the inverse sine of both sides, but it's really important to recognize that the inverse sine is actually a function. And if you remember that inverse sine function, we actually had to apply a restriction on it for it to work. And if you remember that restriction here, so that'd be theta equals a sine inverse of square root of two over two. However, it has to fall within the restriction of a negative pi halves to pi halves. So then we go back to our unit circle and we say, well, what is the only solution here that satisfies that restriction here between negative pi halves and a pi halves? The only answer that works here is pi over four. So if you were to solve this equation using this method, you would get theta equals a pi over four. So that satisfies this equation, but that is not your full answer. That's why it goes back to this main question that you have to ask yourself when you're solving these functions. This is not saying find the one solution that makes this equation true. This is saying find all the angles that make this equation true. And it's very important for you to see when we're dealing with looking at something from a graph, we can have multiple solutions. Don't rely on using your inverse functions. Ask yourself the question, the sign of what angle is going to be equal to my value. And again, if you're dealing with the sine function, then you're looking for the y coordinate. If you're dealing with cosine, you're going to be looking for the x coordinate and you're looking for tangent, you're going to be looking for the y over x coordinate. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. If you want more examples of how to solve trigonometric equations, go ahead and check out the examples and resources I have for you down below, or go ahead and check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.